Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio, so today we need to take a little bit of a look at the most expensive cards from Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Although it is actually one set in Japan, it's two sets, it's a double set. Over here, it is very much just one set with the names of both games, because I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, why not? So there are a few that just missed out. We're going to go through these a little more quickly, but I do think it is worth just having a little bit of a chat about them as we go along. So we've got ourselves the Professor's Research Sada Full Art. Yes, Sada is a lot more popular than Turo. It's a full art. It's Professor's Research. This is the best professor of the two games. That makes perfect sense to me. The special illustration rare of Jack is coming in at $25. Jack is a, it's a decent enough card. It is the lowest of the illustration rares, other than huh, the only one that I pulled. Cheers for that. But you know what? This is still pretty cool, and $25 is about right. Well, for now, these are all going to fall, let's be clear. I told you this the other day, they are all going to fall before release. Uh, the gold version of Nest Ball is coming in at $25. Remember, this is not the first gold nest ball we've ever actually had. We've had one in the past, and that should keep the value of this a little bit lower because we've always got the option to, you know, use the other gold nest ball. Uh, Gyarados EX, this is at $25 at the moment. This is egregiously high. The Terra EXs over in Japan are worth a few quid. $25 for this card is ridiculous, unless the pull rates are so much lower than they were in Japan, which I refuse to believe is actually true. So no, ladies and gentlemen, do not pay $25 for this card. Not even close. Uh, Gold Coridon is coming in at $25. Coridon, of course, not as good as Maridon, not by half, but it might be better in the future, and it's still a gold card. It's coming in about $25. The full art of Gardevoir EX, at the end of the day, it's still Gardevoir, everybody loves Gardevoir, and it's a good card of a very good ability to accelerate energy, so maybe it'll be good, $25 again, and then the one that got closest, Rare Candy, the gold version of that, is coming in at about $30. And that meant it got very, very close to the list. Of course, we've actually had two gold versions of Rare Candy in the past. So I don't expect this one to be hideously high, but it is hanging on there at $30 for the moment. So with all of the ones that didn't make it, what did make it onto the list, well, in at number 10, we've got the gold version of Maridon, which is coming in at about $30. Do bear in mind, wherever they've got the same value, do, and it's actually the only time it's going to come up, do please know that I've looked in a bunch of places to break the tie. So I'm giving you an approximate value based on TCG Player, eBay, etc. But also please bear in mind that I have looked around and if this looks like they've got the same value, I have made sure to see which one averages ever so slightly higher. I've also rounded to the nearest $5 to make it easier. So the gold version of a ride on, I mean, look, it's a box legendary, which is cool. And it's a gold car for low pull rate, which is cool. But it's also a ride on with that ridiculously good ability that lets you accelerate all your lightning Pokemon onto the bench. And a really nice attack that does 220 for free energy. Maridon is going to be a very good deck post rotation. This is the gold version of Maridon. Not the best version, which is why it comes in at number 10, but still a very cool version. In at number 9, we've got my personal chase card from the set, the Special Illustration Rare of Penny. And it's not because I particularly like Penny as a character or anything like that. It is because it is an Okacheke card. And I might have mentioned this once or twice. I am a gigantic fan of Okacheke. I adore Okacheke. I think they are the best artists working in the Pokemon TCG at the moment. So, yeah. This one makes me very, very happy indeed. $35, I, I still think this is way too high. Remember, the set isn't actually out yet. As I record, we are one day away. This should be going up today unless something happens. So, yeah. Basically, all of these are going to come down in price as time goes by. As it stands at the moment, just kind of hold off for a minute, I would. It's nice to look at the values, and the, the order here shouldn't change very much, but do bear in mind that the values should all come down, some of them quite significantly. But yeah, Penny's a cool card, lets you put a basic Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your hand. Nice little card. Great artwork in at number 9. 
In a number eight, another card I'll be picking up if it becomes cheap enough. The special illustration rare of Great Tusk. Now, I personally kind of like this. Free energy 250, not too bad. But mostly here it's the artwork. I love Great Tusk. This is, of course, where you find Great Tusk in the game. Wonderful, beautiful artwork. A very cool Pokemon. And like I say, I do think this is going to be kind of playable and that makes me happy. In at number 7, we've got the special illustration rare of Arvin. And if you watched my video where I had a chat about the launch event I went to, you might have noticed that I pulled this. I also, even though it's going in at, I think it's $45 I'm putting it as, it's actually more expensive than Penny. I'm just hoping I can straight up trade this for a Penny. Because I just want the Okacheke Penny more than I want the Arvin, honestly. I ain't going to be collecting all of them. So if I could trade an Arvin for a Penny, that would be awesome. If anyone's got a Penny they wish to trade for an Arvin, hit me up on Twitter at the Wossy, would ya? So it's coming in about $45, and Arvin is actually a really good card. Let's you search your deck for an item and a tool card. And bear in mind, Pokemon tools up until Scarlet and Violet were a subsection of items that is no longer the case. And being able to get these could end up being really, really advantageous. Not to mention, of course, that one of the things it will let you search for is Forest Seal Stone, which lets you search for any card you like. And yeah, that is a, um, a rather huge advantage of Arvin. It's why a lot of players are actually getting excited about Arvin. The fact you can get an item and then a forest seal stone to go and search for any card you like, that does sound pretty gosh darn good to me. Now, coming in at number six, we've got the full art of Miriam, the lesser Miriam, as I have come to refer to it, coming in at about $50. And... People are going crazy over Miriam. I don't really know why, because the character isn't exactly some big central part of Scarlet and Violet or anything silly like that. But this is the cheaper version of Miriam, and I think a lot of the hype for this is really building off of the hype for the special illustration rare. It's a good card, incidentally. Shuffle up to five Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck, and then draw three cards. Generally speaking, your recovery supporters don't draw cards, so the idea that you can draw cards at the same time as recovering Pokemon is huge. And for that reason, it should see a bunch of play. But this one I do think is slightly overhyped based on the special illustration rare, which incidentally I also think is overhyped. In at number five, we've got the special illustration rare of Iron Treads. And I like this for the same reason I like Great Tusk. You can see from my logo, I adore some Don fan action. Even if it is, you know, Great Tusk or Iron Treads, any version of Don Fan is good by me. Again, you've got that beautiful artwork. You know, it is where it is in the game. And it's just a stunning card. Card-wise, I don't like it as much as I like Great Tusk. I've got to be honest with you. Triple A's was a great attack when it was on Registeel. It's not such a great attack in 2023. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, this is, it's pretty cool. I like it. And I adore the art. Well, this is another one I'm going to be picking up if I get a chance. Now, in at number four, we've got the special illustration rare of Coridon. And this one is largely an artwork thing. I've already explained to you that Coridon as a whole, it's not as popular as Maridon. At least it doesn't seem to be. It's certainly not as playable as Maridon. You know, the ability's great. lets you attach a couple of fighting energy from the discard. But it ends your turn. And because it attacks from the discard, you only really want to use it turn one when you can't attack anyway. But now you've got to get the energy into the discard without using a supporter, because you can't do that turn one. And then you've got to use this to end your turn. It's not going to work all that often unless it actually ends a turn where you want to be attacking. But look at the artwork and look at the Dedene front and center and tell me this isn't a beautiful card. In at number three, we got the special illustration rare of Gardevoir. And this is partly people love Gardevoir. And it's partly the fact that actually, yeah, this could be a playable card. The ability essentially lets you accelerate as much psychic energy as you like from the discard. And sure, you've got to take a bunch of damage counters in order to do so. But it's really not the end of the world, honestly, ladies and gentlemen. It really isn't. And after that, you've got all your energy on the field. And if you get KO'd, you can get all your energy back straight away. And that's kind of my point here. This is just a very, very, very cool card indeed. And 
it's probably not going to work out quite as well as people hope. I don't think it's going to be quite as good as people hope, but the combination of Gardevoir and a potentially playable card puts it in at number three at about $80. And you notice we've been going up kind of incrementally. There's not been any huge jumps, and there's not going to be. In at number two, we got the Special Illustration Rare of Miraidon coming in at about a $90 card. And this one, again, I've already explained to you why Miraidon's so good. It's got that ability, lets you search your deck for two lightning basic Pokemon and put them on the bench, which is clearly awesome. And it's got a very good attack. And the artwork here is beyond stunning. You got Dashman right there. And yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. You got a stunning card of a popular Pokemon that's incredibly playable. And that's the kind of thing that's always going to get you up high on the list. And then at number one, we got the special illustration rare of Miriam. Now, I'm going to bring you a video soon telling you about how these cards are just absolutely cratering in value. We're not there yet. But I am going to make that video very soon. But Miriam's already down at a $100 card. I saw people, as soon as the pre-releases started and this card got out into the wild, I saw people trying to sell this card for $250. Which was always ridiculous. That was always a ridiculous amount of money. That was never going to work. That was never going to be a thing. So you know what? $100, it's a good start but I still think it's going to end up quite a bit lower than this. As for why it is up at number one on the list, again, it's a decent card, but it's not the best card in the set. It is literally just a case of people, in every set we seem to have one special illustration rare, that the community as a whole decide this is it. This is the one. And apparently here, this is it. This is the one. And it's cool. It's a nice card. Is it deserving of being number one? I don't think so. I think Maridon should be number one. But I'm not the one setting the market, ladies and gentlemen. So this is what we're left with. And there we go. Those are your top 10 cards on Scarlet and Violet. And now it's over to you guys. I want to know which of these cards you pulled. I want to know which of these cards you want to pull. I want to know which ones of these you're going to be picking up as singles. And how long you're willing to wait before you do so. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord and chat with us about Pokemon or indeed anything else. And you can get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely It's a Coaster, who's one of the most active people over on our Discord and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.